Hey everyone, thanks for being here in worship this morning. It is February the 21st, the first Sunday in Lent, and I hope you are able to pick up one of our Lenten bags that has a lot of things in it. Um, one is, and you may not have gotten this because it didn't get in the earlier uh, handouts, but it's a devotional booklet for the season of Lent, The Road Back to God. It has um, little short devotionals that are really helpful as you journey through the season of Lent. We also have a devotional booklet for children. So um, we'd like for you to pick that up for your family as well. Hey, and don't forget the upper rooms are in for March and April. So swing by and pick one of those up. And then during the season of Lent, Donna Ware works really hard and put together these little devotions that have symbols in them. And on this first Sunday of Lent, week one, uh, you can read this and learn more about Lent and about your own relationship with God. There was one for Ash Wednesday. This is the first Sunday of Lent. So it's not too late to get in on this. And in that bag also, are uh, there's a palm cross that you can uh, use for Palm Sunday. I also have a little medallion that talks about loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and um love your neighbor as yourself. You can hold on to that during Lent and make sure you think about those things. Also, you can pick up these uh, communion cups where we'll celebrate communion together. And we're going to do that on the first Sunday of uh, March and then also on Monday, Thursday. So please pick up enough for you and those in your household. You don't have to have those, but they're helpful for communion as the bread in the bottom and the cup, of course. So I hope you will, and that will just really make your Lent more meaningful. The season of Lent is important to grow deeper in your relationship with the Lord. I'll talk about that more in my sermon today, but I'm really glad you're worshiping with us, and I hope you'll find that the music and the words, the prayers are inspirational and helpful to you. God bless you as we worship together today. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for this day and an opportunity to come together in your name. We thank you for the blessing of each and every day, but we thank you so much for this holy day. May we worship you and open up our hearts to your love. In Christ's name we pray, amen. As we gather together on this Sunday, we remember all of those on our prayer list. There are many who've lost loved ones and many who are suffering and going through difficult times, friends and family members with the coronavirus and just so many that need our prayers right now. And of course, our community and our nation and the world, we lift all of these needs, the many around the world. Uh, and especially we think of the victims of uh, natural disasters in Texas, Oklahoma, other places that have suffered so much this week. With all of these on our hearts, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious and loving Father, thank you for the sacred season of Lent. 
may we be drawn closer to you and may you prepare in our hearts a place for you. Lord, thank you for solitude and silence, but also help us to stand strong and do what is right. May we discover your grace and again, the joy of a prayerful life. Lord, open up our hearts to, that we can give to those in need, and in so doing, rediscover the grace of gratitude and generosity. Help us to stay away from those things that threaten the well-being of our body and our soul. If we give up something, Lord, may we do it to draw closer to you. May we commit ourselves to something that brings us closer to you. Lord, thank you for grace and simplicity. Thank you for this time to focus on our relationship with you. And may you rekindle our love for you and our faith in you as we journey together in this season of Lent. Thank you for Chapelwood and thank you for the United Methodist Church and for your church around the world. May we be strong and courageous, bold as we live out our lives of faith. We thank you, Father, that you are allowing us to draw closer to you. Father, forgive us where we have fallen short of what you've called us to be and help us to do what is right. Thank you, Lord, for this day and for this gift of prayer. And we lift up, Lord, words of praise to you, but also the words that our Lord, our Savior, has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hear these words from Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 9-15. through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the word of God for God's people. Thanks be to God. Have you ever had someone you really wanted to meet? Maybe a hero, an athlete, an actor, somebody you looked up to, somebody you really admired, and you just couldn't wait to meet them. There's a story from back in 1924 when Jack Sundine was in line to meet the then president of the United States. He was in line and waiting, and he noticed people speaking briefly to the president. And he noticed the president reaching over, leaning over, and saying a few words to each person. He wondered what was being said. And he finally got to the front of the line and, and met the president, shook his hand. And just like everybody else, the president leaned over and spoke some words to young Jack. And he said, move along, move along. It's interesting, isn't it? We, we admire people, we look up to them. And sometimes when we meet our heroes, people we look up to, it's not everything we, we hoped it would be. Move along. Aren't you glad God doesn't say that to you in your own life? When you draw close to him, when you open up your heart, when you say to him, I'm here, Lord, what do you need? I want to give you my all. He doesn't just say, move along. God is in the business of receiving us and welcoming us and loving and embracing us. So we come to this season of Lent committing to something or giving up something in order that we draw closer to God. And he doesn't say, 
just move along. He wants to be with us. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Do something about it, Jesus says. It's time. It's time now. It's time as we enter into this season of Lent, this first Sunday of Lent, to make a new path, to follow Jesus again, to allow him to be our leader, our driver, not our co-pilot, but our pilot. He is the one who wants to be with us. We must choose to follow him. You know, as a pastor, occasionally people will come to me or more often people will come to me and say something like this. I want to do this for the church. I want to do this. I want to be on this committee. I want to lead this committee. I want to be in charge of this. But occasionally, occasionally someone comes to me and says something along these lines. I'm not a good chief. I'm not a great leader, but I'm a really good follower. Boy, we light up when people come to us with that because we all need people to follow. And ultimately what I'm talking about is following Jesus Christ, following him wherever he might lead us. This is a season of the year, the Christian year, where we reflect upon Jesus going into the wilderness. And these 40 days in the wilderness are symbolic to us who are part of the church to enter into a spiritual wilderness with him. We go with him. We follow him. We seek to be with him and allow him to fill those empty places in our lives. And as much as I want to believe Lent is about giving up something like chocolate or Coca-Cola or something that um, might help you out physically and spiritually, it is much, much more. It is about growing and deepening your relationship with the Lord and being with him and allowing him to minister to you and be with you and help you grow in your relationship with him. You must follow. Sometimes, sometimes we are driven into the wilderness. Sometimes we are, it's like we are kicked into the wilderness and things come upon us suddenly. But when you go into that wilderness, you go with Jesus. And just as he went for our sake, we too as the church must enter into this season knowing that in order to grow and become more Christ-like, to have meaning and purpose in our life, we must go. We must go into that wilderness and allow Jesus, allow Jesus to lead. Hey, I've, I've shared this story. I think I shared it at Christmas one time with Chapelwood here. But I remember um, as a kid wanting more than anything, a motorcycle. And I begged my parents for that motorcycle. And I was reminded again and again, I would not be getting a motorcycle for Christmas or my birthday or ever. Maybe if I grew up one day, maybe if I had my own money, maybe then I could buy a motorcycle. I still don't have a motorcycle. But anyway, I wanted the specific model of a Yamaha YZ80, an off-road bike, uh, one that a friend had, of course, and I wanted it. And I wanted it more than anything. But I was told repeatedly, you will not be getting a motorcycle. Imagine, to my surprise, one Christmas morning, I received not a motorcycle, and the YZ80 was, uh, the tank on it was yellow, so that was the color of it. I received instead a yellow skateboard. Now, I also wanted a skateboard, but not as much as a motorcycle. And on this skateboard, my dad, who I had the kind of relationship with him that this was actually funny to me, he had put a sticker. I knew I wasn't getting a motorcycle. He had put a sticker on that skateboard and written on it in something with like a Sharpie. It said YZ80, a YZ80 model skateboard instead of a motorcycle. I was so disappointed, but I laughed about it because I did want a skateboard and I got pretty good with the skateboard. Now, when I see a skateboard today, I start to hurt when I, when I look at it because I remember how many times I fell in order to get halfway decent on the skateboard. And for some of you, that's a pretty funny image of me on the skateboard. But I remember being on that skateboard. Two of the tricks you have to learn pretty quick if you're going to do anything on a skateboard is um, a 180 and a 360. And they sound 
uh, kind of similar, two numbers. 180 is turning 180 degrees. You are going one direction, you kick back and flip around, and the skateboard is going in the other direction or pointing in the other direction. A 360 is a complete circle. You do a, a turn 360 degrees. Now, the 180 was, to me, quite simple. You just put a little pressure down on the back, you flip around, and all of a sudden, before you know it, you're pointing the total opposite direction. 360s, though, you, you worked hard on that, and you tried to turn all the way around. It was just a little bit longer, but I never could quite... I did eventually get there, but it wasn't pretty because about three quarters of the way, almost home, 360 degrees, I'd lose my balance and I'd fall and bang up my knees and catch my hands. And it wasn't fun. Eventually I got it, but it was tough. And I, I thought about that when I was working on the sermon. For some reason, it came back to me. A 180 was pretty pretty doable because in, in life, when something is keeping us uh, from drawing near to God and, and experiencing his goodness and grace, he gives us that choice. He says, I need you to turn. You know, if you want to grow, if you want to deepen your relationship with me, if you want more meaning and purpose in your life, you're going to have to turn the other direction. And, and it's simple. But you know what we do? What we do is kind of what I would do on that skateboard. I would try to go, well, this was good. This was good for a little while. I'm pointing in the opposite direction. I'm going with Jesus now, and that's great. But I'm going to keep going around all the way back to where I was. And I'm going to just think about maybe heading back the way I was and, and doing things the way I used to do them. And it never really works out, does it? It leaves us empty. It leaves us hurt. It leaves us wounded because we are not experiencing the grace, the forgiveness, the mercy, and the goodness of God. We, we're tempted to get back into that wilderness and stay in that place and never grow deeper in our relationship with God because we, we become fearful of just that 180 and walking with him. And we think somehow we can do it all on our own. So we want to go all the way back around to where we were. Jesus says, now I've got a better way. I want you to go with me. I want you to repent, believe the gospel and follow me. There's a new path, a new direction. I need you to follow. You know, each of us chooses if we are going to follow Jesus. And it takes us down a different path, a different direction, and we're with him no matter what. We choose whether we follow Jesus or not. You know, I, what I miss about being with everyone and Sunday after Sunday, those who haven't been able to participate in in-person worship because of of, of good reason of, of being safe. I miss uh, everybody experiencing the symbolism and the sacraments and the rituals and the things we do Sunday after Sunday because they draw us back to the presence of God, those routines, those rituals, the things that we share together as we come together and worship. As, as we follow Jesus, there are things that remind us of him along the way. But ultimately, it's, it's about you deciding. It's about me deciding and the church deciding to follow Jesus, to put him first, to not just take our traditions and say, well, we've, we've completed everything. We've filled in, checked the boxes and filled in the blanks. It's about choosing to follow him each and every day. There was a, a young boy who was uh, worried about uh, his own relationship with God, and he he became he he had become a Christian, a follower, and he was worried. He talked to his youth pastor about what if I forget just how much God loves me, and what if I forget Him sometimes? And the youth pastor wisely said to him, "You remember when your dad was gone a long time on a, a business trip, and he did you did you forget about him?" He said, "No, he would call and he would send notes and." things back. Uh, this was back before texts and cell phones. And he said, so I remembered him. And he said, you know, your heavenly father has also left you letters, the word of God, left you the Holy Spirit, left you uh, baptism and communion and things you do at church to remember that he is with you. So when we do that 180, when we turn and repent and believe the gospel and follow Jesus, there are signs 
along the way. And the church is one of those signs. We enter into a time of of being in the wilderness, but we're not alone. We have one another. We have Jesus Christ. We have his love. We have the Holy Spirit. And it is with us. And it reminds us that he is always near. We may choose to not follow him always. And we will find ourselves struggling. But he will never say, just move along. I don't have time for you anymore. Never, ever. If you're in your wilderness, wherever it might be, it might be a situation in your family, in your finances, uh, in your, your job or the lack thereof. You might be in the wilderness, but you are not alone. God is with you. So when we make that pivot, when we make that change and we follow Jesus and we seek to let him lead our lives, we start to become more like him and share his love with others and others see him in us, in our actions, in the church, Chapelwood and the United Methodist. I'm so proud to be a United Methodist because uh, even though we have difficulties and disagreements, we work together in order to stay together and be an example of the love of Christ in our community. And people see that in us. And it made me think about a poem I saw. I don't know the author. Obviously, her name was Maggie because it's called Maggie's Poem. And I just want to read a few words about the example we said in, in Maggie's words. Do you know, do you understand that you represent Jesus to me? Do you know, do you understand that when you treat me with gentleness, it raises the question in my mind that maybe he is gentle too. Maybe he isn't someone who laughs when I hurt. Do you know, do you understand that when you listen to my question and you don't laugh, I think, what if Jesus is interested in me too? I love a God who doesn't mock and ignore me. Do you know, do you understand that your words are his words, your face, his face to someone like me? Please be who you say you are. Please, God, don't let this be another trick. Please let this be real. We set an example as a church. We set an example as individuals when we say, we're not just going to give up something for Lent, but we're going to pivot and go in a new direction. We're going to do a 180. We're going to follow. We're going to be willing to let him lead our lives. We're going to be let, willing to let him be in charge. I hope you choose that today. Um, there's a place and a space for you. God will not just say, move along. If you're in a wilderness, he's going to be with you. He's going to embrace you. You're going to be with him. Go in the right direction. Let him lead you. Let him be your Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this message and thank you for the hope that it brings, knowing that you are with us no matter where we go, what situation we find ourselves in. Your goodness and your grace are always available to us. We thank you for loving us so much that you sent to us your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. May we go with him into the wilderness. May we experience his goodness and grace and only the things that you can bring as we seek to follow you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.